For your goodness. Hallelujah. For your goodness. Oh, I believe I fear a witness in the room. For your goodness and for your mercy toward us. Hallelujah. For your goodness. Maybe he hadn't been good to anybody but me, but for your goodness. Hallelujah. And for your mercy. Uh, for your goodness and your mercy. We offer you some praise. Somebody tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. While you're finding 2 Corinthians, I want to take my hat off to music ministry, dance ministry. I want to say thank you for ministerial staff. Job well done. Thank you, guys. Amen. You know, it's tough. It's tough when, when you got to try to pull people into worship because of life's circumstances. Sometimes we just show up and we don't feel like praising him. Amen. But the music ministry ministers have to push and continue to push because even when you don't feel like it he's worthy of the praise hallelujah so thank you music ministry thank you thank you dance teams um, grab your bible I 
I don't expect y'all to help me. I don't expect, I don't expect uh, Ronnie for them to help me with this message. Uh, but I'm going to preach it anyhow. This, this message is one of those ones that church folk won't say much because it's too rough. But listen to what Paul says in some difficult moments. He says in verse number five of the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter number 12, he says, Of such a one I will boast. Yet of myself I will not boast, except, get that, except in my infirmities. For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth, but I will refrain, lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations. Listen to him. I had a thorn given to me in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning these things, I pleaded with the Lord three times that he might remove it from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient. <laughs> For in my strength is made perfect in weakness. According to the King James Version, he says in verse number seven to them that be patient, he talks about this whole issue. He talks about this whole issue of, of, of going through life with troubles and trials. And when he talks about it, it blesses me because he says that I was given a thorn in my flesh. I was given a thorn in my flesh. And he talks about not boasting about yourself. Can I talk about this for a minute? I want to talk, I want to talk from the thought this morning. This is not kid stuff. Tell somebody around you this sermon is rated R. This is a rated R sermon. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you can have your seat. They're not going to talk to you no more today. But I need you to help me. This is a rated R Rated R segment. I remember growing up vividly, Lonnie. I remember as a child. I remember that that adults and children were two different groups. I remember going to growing up, Miss Matilda, where the adults of my childhood, the tubs of my time. Uh, they had a determination to make sure that there was a proper separation between children and adults. That there was, there was this clear, this clear distinct line of, of, of detachment between adults and children. Yeah, grown folks would do grown folks stuff. But children had to stay in their place. Y'all not going to talk to me in here. I, 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 unlike, unlike the parents of today where children and parents are buddies and pals. They, 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 they do everything together. There are parents and there are parents trying to be friends with their children. But not in my day. In my day, in my day, in my day, children understood I am the parent and you are the child. In my childhood, when, when, the, children, when the adults got ready, uh, Brown, when they got ready to have conversation, they had what they called grown folk talk. And when they had grown folk talk, they would make the children leave the room. 
Yeah, y'all don't remember that, do you? There was a time in my childhood when we had grown folk conversation. They knew that there were certain conversations that we had as adults that were appropriate for adults, but then there were conversations that we had for adults that were inappropriate for children. And so and so we would, they understood that there was a time when grown folk would talk and children would leave the room. And, and I believe that, I believe that now uh, that the movie industry has understood that because uh, when movies, when there are movies, they have ratings on their movies. They have ratings. Movies are supposed to be age sensitive. Yeah, there are some movies that are fitting for adults, and then there are movies that are, uh, are inappropriate for children. That's why they have uh, ratings on them. Uh, they have rated G. They have rated PG. They have PG-13. Uh, they, they, they have, then they have rated R. They have rated R. Restricted for mature audiences only. Yeah, there are movies like that that are only for the grown folk. And, and as I read this text, I want y'all to follow me because as I read this text, if ever there was a text in the Bible that should be rated R for mature only audiences only, it's Paul right here. Paul points to the fact that, that, that in life with God, we don't need to get hung up on one-sided living. There, there are moments when life is good. And then there are moments when life is rough. I told y'all, y'all get quiet. I, 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 uh, moments when life is on top of the mountain, and then there are moments when life feels like you're in the gutter. Uh, it, it's painful uh, and unpleasant at times because uh, uh, what the children, the reason this is rated R is because what the children of God need to understand is that God's grace is sufficient. But uh, when you talk about the grace of God, most of the time uh, when we deal with the grace of God, we only want to deal with uh, the grace of God that talks about, ah, uh, uh, yeah, what we get that we don't deserve. We only want to talk about the unmerited favor of God. We only want to talk about the good times of God. That is what we call saving grace. When he saves you from your sin and gives you stuff you don't deserve, somebody say it with me, that's saving grace. Yeah, but there's another side. There's another side to grace. And uh, when you deal with the other side of grace, that grace is challenging. And that grace is painful. And, and, and that grace sometimes is unpleasant. And it is that grace that you and I have to be able to understand. This is why I say it's for grown folk. That every day ain't sunny and you still got to be able to give him glory when things ain't going in your way mm -hmm. uh, this painful this side of grace brown that's the painful side of grace uh, we want to deal with saving grace but I want to deal this morning not with saving grace but I want to deal with sustaining grace I, I want to deal with that grace that when uh, it's not going good when things are upside down uh, when things are not going my way I want to deal with the grace that declares uh, that when I'm broke sick busted and disgusted I can still lift my voice and lift my hands and declare God is good let me see if I can try it out in the room it ain't going your way but you gotta say God is good it's not going like you want to but you gotta shout God is good see the mature Christian don't dance over cars and cash and clothing a real Christian says come hell or high water I'm able to lift my voice and give God the glory is anybody in here going through something you can still praise him is there anybody in here struggling that can still praise him is there anybody in here going through an issue that can still praise him I got the wrong group I said you gotta say out of your mouth no matter what God is 
God is good. Oh, yeah, this sustaining, yeah, this sustaining grace. If y'all give me, give me, give me six minutes and I'll be done. Give me six minutes. Uh, the, yeah, yeah. Come, come here, Dougie Fresh. Give me six. All I need is six. There, there, there's another side of grace mm -hmm, that's called sustaining grace. No one knows more, is more qualified to talk about that kind of grace than the Apostle Paul. This is a the same Paul, the same Paul, y'all, uh, um, that describes in his life that there are moments of high and uh, moments of low. There are moments of ecstasy of the mountain, and then uh, there are moments of lowliness of uh, agony. Yeah, this is the same Paul that told us uh, of his experience in uh, the third heavens. This is the same Paul uh, who has shown visions and revelations and then that same Paul, that same Paul uh, described his lowly, cold, uh, and damp pain and agonist journey. While both of these experience on the mountain, yeah, that is grace. Uh, and it expresses, it, ex it expresses an aspect of grace. But also, get this, uh, the other side of grace is the one we need to talk about. The one that says uh, um, that I'm not uh, experiencing sing the loftiness of God but I still believe he is good I thought I'd teach this this morning because I'm finding in the body of Christ that the only time we can shout and the only time we can dance is when God give us a promotion and when he give us a car and when he give us a house and give us a husband then we can give God the glory but I'm here to tell you you gotta get that out of your spirit because some of these days the devil is on your track and God is gonna let you go through it and you still gonna have to lift your hands and give him the glory some days some folk on that job gonna get on your ever loving nerves and you got to get off that job, come to church on Sunday, lift your hands and declare that God is good. Someday your husband ain't going to do right. Your husband, your wife going to act the fool. Your children are going crazy. But you still going to have to shake that mess off. Put your clothes on. Come to the house of God. Lift your hands with all the struggle and holler God is good. Can I get some help in the room? Somebody say it with me. God is good. Yeah. Do y'all mind if I just take another minute with this text? I'm almost there. I want to take one minute with the text here and I want to share some stuff that ain't for youngins. Mm -hmm. I want to share some stuff that ain't for children. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then I'm going to be on my way I, I, some, somebody, somebody say teachers, bitches, teachers, teachers the first thing I want you to see in this text here is uh, that Paul points out the fact uh, that even though he's been on the mountain and uh, now he points out the fact that even after the mountain be careful and be prepared for predicaments yeah, get this. Paul says, I've been in the third heaven. I, I've seen the revelations. I've seen the visions of God. I've enjoyed having my head in the clouds. Uh, and there is no other mortal man that have seen the things that I've seen of God. Uh, but now the same Paul who had his head in the clouds uh, now has to come down from the mountain of ecstasy and deal with the reality of the valley of pain and agony. When Paul gets back down off of this reality, he finds after the, after the mountain, he finds pain. Mm -hmm. well, what do you do, preacher, when you have seen God work and then you got to come back down to trouble? Lean in. I got it for you. Notice here the predicament. Notice the predicament. First of all, the predicament is a sensual irritation. Verse 7 says, I got this thorn in my flesh. Now, that word thorn means a, a sharp object. It means a pointed kind of object. Th this is metaphorically Paul talking uh, to describe the condition of being somebody that has to take a stake in his flesh that he can't seem to get rid of. He says, this thorn was given to me. 
Now, y'all don't know what I'm talking about. There is here. Here's what. Here's what. The question becomes, what was his thorn? What was his thorn, Ronnie? What was his thorn? And some theologians say this. They say his thorn was a human persona. Uh, what do you mean, Bishop? It, 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 it's, it's right here that, that maybe the thorn was some haters hating. Mm-hmm. They, they, they dog in him continually for no reason at all. Maybe it was just folk that didn't like him for no reason. Uh, maybe the reason for the thorn was uh, because of his apostolic calling. Uh, they, were, they were struggling with the authenticity uh, of his, uh, his calling because some said he was not who he said he was. So haters hating because of his apostolic calling, trying to call into question uh, whether he's authentic or not. And the question becomes, what difference does it matter? Now, what business of it is yours, uh, whether or not I am who I am or not? Why are you so in consumed by me uh, that you are feeling and hating me for no reason at all? Uh, haters going to hate. Y'all not going to talk to me. They going to hate you, and sometimes they don't even have to have reason to hate. Uh, they hate, and they don't even know who you are. And I came in here to get, get you grown up because you need to stop crying over haters. You need to stop worrying about who like you and who don't like you, who don't put click like on your Facebook, and, and who is doing subliminal messages in the atmosphere. It doesn't matter. Tell somebody around you, haters are going to hate. Uh, yeah, y'all not going to talk to me here. I'm going to preach it anyhow. Have you ever been there where you haven't done anything to them, but yet they got all of this stuff to say about you? They know more about your business than you do. They telling you stuff that's shocking you. And because haters are going to hate, y'all not going to help me in here. I'm trying to get you delivered. Shake it off in the room and say, let them talk all they want to talk. Let them say whatever they want to say because God is still feel good oh uh, yes yeah 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 so 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 first of all there is the human uh, the human persona uh, maybe that's what the thorn is first lady maybe the thorn was uh, uh, the, the the speculation also could have been uh, the fact that 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 Paul himself they said uh, he had some shortcomings and some limitations uh, because uh, he was coming from uh, Corinth uh, sister Glendora uh, he is criticized get this uh, he's criticized for his statue and his appearance mm-hmm. oh, yeah, y'all gonna get it in a minute Paul was not known for being handsome mm-hmm. uh, the Bible says that he was short bald headed uh, uh, with a uh, some type of facial webs and ridges uh, that caused him not to be attractive Mm-hmm. Yeah, Paul, Paul, Paul. The, 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 the Bible says that he was short, bald headed, and not good to look at. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I, I, fit, I fit a couple of the categories, but uh, so, uh, the short and the bald headed, yeah, I fit that category. Uh, oh, maybe not the not so good to look at, but it's, uh, some said it was uh, because of his own situations. I'm challenging you in the house uh, and that maybe your thorn is how others perceive you. Maybe your thorn is uh, you are so consumed with how others uh, look at you. Uh, may, maybe, maybe your thorn is uh, not only personal limitations, uh, but some of them said he had personal sin he could not overcome. Uh, some type of ophthalmic uh, plaguing issue with his eyes. Uh, actually, we don't know what the thorn was. Uh, neither do we know where it came, where he must have picked it up from. Uh, but all we know is Paul says, I have this thorn in my flesh. 
anybody in here with and been there where something was just plaguing you you just couldn't shake it off you couldn't get rid of it what are you saying preacher every now and then you can't blame where you are on the devil every now and then it is God that has allowed your mess to be what it is and God says I need the child of God to know that when you don't have what you want like you want it I need to know that you can praise me in your trouble I'm trying to raise a bunch of believers who know the word of God and what we have in church, what we have in church are some fictitious, fake and phony foes who talking about God, I'll bless you no matter what. I'll bless you at all times and then we come to church and our toe is hurting. We come to church with a headache. We come to church and we're feeling a little bad and folk done talked about us. Somebody said something to us at the door on the way in then we can't give him the praise but that devil is a lie I put my foot on his head today I'm going to bless him no matter what so can I get somebody can I get anybody can I get everybody to open your mouth and declare in this room I'm going to praise him no matter what's going on in my life ah, I feel him coming in here what did y'all come in here for did you come to praise him or did you come in here to look around and see how somebody else is responding after all you've been through lift up your voice and holler God is good I got the wrong church I said holler down at your neighbor and tell them God is good oh, Lord I feel like preaching in here now and so even though hey sit down let me deal let me dig a little further even though Jesus when he's there he's sharing through Paul uh, that all of us have to experience pain and predicament I'm trying to help uh, with what God has given me this assignment to build uh, the body of believers to the point uh, where you are not going to shy away from praise uh, because of predicament uh, even Jesus when he's hanging on the cross said if this be your will God let this cup pass from me all I'm trying to say is that if God allowed Jesus to face pain and if God allowed Paul to face pain then everybody every now and then are going to go through and face pain so not only was this a predicament of sensual irritability but it was also satanic influence he said the messenger of God the, of the Satan comes to buffet me it is in the present tense y'all it's in the present tense which means get this that Satan didn't just come one day he kept on coming and it seemed like every time I get rid of him his son show up and when I get rid of his son here come his cousin at my house and when I get rid of his cousin here come his cousin's cousin at my house anybody in here besides me that every time it seems like you get rid of one devil here comes another devil here comes another devil he hounding me every day I do this get this straight something else happens so God is saying to the child of God is that sometimes I'm going to allow circumstances and when I do I need to know that you're capable and able to praise me when there is no silver lining in the story that means that means that sometimes I'm going to allow the enemy to mess with you and when I do Lord can you shake it off and give him the glory come here Job let me see if I can stick Job into the story it says that he came to Job's house and when he came by Job's house the question is have you considered my servant Job and that means that means that God is saying that I can trust Job with trouble I can trust Job that when things get rough he won't turn his back on me and so I came to the church Lord I feel like preaching anyhow. I came to the church today. I wonder, can God trust Ronnie with his trouble? Can, Ron, can God trust Elder Howard with trouble? 
Can God trust Gail? Can he trust uh, Cheryl with trouble? Can he trust Blunt and can he trust Kenny and First Lady and, and Lisa and, and Mama? Can he trust y'all with trouble? He's saying that when trouble comes your way, God, I feel like hollering in here. Will you give me the glory anyhow? If he's going to mess with you, hold on one second, I'm almost there, son. If he's going to mess with you, uh, he's got to have permission in order to mess with your house. But when he does mess with your house, can you still tell God thank you? So the first thing this morning as I hasten to get back to Rocky Mountain is that there's going to be a predicament in your life. Help me preach it. Tell somebody predicament. But after the predicament, there's going to be purpose manifested. After the predicament is mentioned, listen to this. He says there's purpose. Watch it. It's purpose in the story. There was given to me a thorn in my flesh I didn't get it by accident I didn't get it by coincidence I didn't get it by happenstance but somebody gave me this thorn which means that even though the thorn causes me hurt he says that it was a gift to me y'all missed it I got this trouble in my life but it is a gift which means that even though I got a problem that's hurting me it is a gift for my life therefore sometimes the pain that I'm in I have to tell God thank you because in order to get me to my next station he sometimes got to give me trial, tribulation and trouble we might ignore pleasure but we cannot not ignore pain the text says that he gave him some pain and Paul says that with this pain it bothered me to death but I still wanted God to know that I love them so I gave him the glory so I called Paul on the phone last night, Tamika, and I told him, Paul, tell me what was the purpose. And he says, the reason why I gave you him, he gave me this trouble is because he wanted to remind everybody else that I was nothing but humanity. Verse number six says, lest any man should think that I'm better than I am. I want to remind everybody else that I ain't, you ain't nothing but filthy rags. See, if God gives us too much, we'll start thinking we higher than we are. If God begins to bless us too good, We'll start acting like we're better than everybody else. So he says, I need to remind the people that whoever I bless ain't nothing but a man. Can you help me preach it in the room? Tell somebody I ain't nothing but a man. I ain't nothing but a woman. Because if you don't tell them that, they'll look at your clothes, your car, and your cash. And they'll think you are somebody because God doesn't bless you. So I need to remind everybody that I got this thorn in my side. And though you think I'm somebody, I ain't nobody. Oh, I see y'all think y'all somebody. Tell your neighbor I ain't nobody but a man. I'm nothing but a woman. And then second of all, we need to make sure not only to remind y'all, but you got to remind those that are gifted and blessed. I told the early church, now it has moved from the world into the church. See, the young people are getting hooked up and hung up on hero mentality. They looking at Kendrick Lamar looking at J. Cole and Drake. They're trying to find heroes and folk like a crazy old and uh, 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 Gucci man. But I came to tell the church, don't think it's just young people in the world because the church done got hung up. 
they done started idolizing the preacher. I want y'all to love me and respect me, but don't worship me because I'm nothing but a man. I act like a man, I think like a man. And if you start worshiping the preacher, you're going to get yourself messed up. And then Kenny, these crazy preachers then started believing their own hype. They got all these armor bearers. They got all of these security guards. And ain't even got but 10 members in their church. I came to tell the preacher, you ain't nothing but a man. Don't get caught up on your own hype. So Paul says there is a predicament to look at. And then there's a purpose we need to all gather. But finally he gave us one more point. He said there's a petition to be made. He said when I was in my trouble, I prayed to the Lord three times. I told him, Lord, remove this thing. Take this trouble out of my life. I said, please, Lord, remove it. I said, pretty please, Lord, remove it. I said, pretty please, Lord, with cherries on top, remove it. He said, I'm not going to remove it, but my grace is sufficient. And I don't know who I'm preaching to, but you need to open up your mouth and give God your best praise. Because even though you, he won't remove uh, the trials and the trouble, uh, he gives you sustaining power to keep on keeping on. Uh, and I think I got a praising church uh, that can say, I'm broke, but I'm praising him. I'm disgusted, but I'm praising him. I'm troubled, but I'm praising him. I'm sick, but I'm praising him. Can I preach like I'm feeling? I know we got to get out of here. But where are my praising folks that can come hell or high water? I'm going to lift him up. I'm going to give him the glory. Can I go a little bit higher? Somebody shout, God is good. I said, Chunk, God is good. I said, open up your doggone mouth and say he's good when I'm on top. He's good when I'm in the valley. He's good when I got what I want. He's good when I don't have a dime. Can I go a little higher? Somebody say he's good. I say he's good. Ain't he all right? Won't he make a way? Won't he make a way? Won't he, won't he, won't he? Won't he make a way? Shout it! Yeah! Look down your row and tell somebody he's good. I said, tell somebody he's good. I ain't got everything, but he's good. Immature people can only praise God when everything's going your way. But can I get some folk to walk with me? Say he's good in the morning. He's good in the evening. He's good when I'm up. He's good when I'm down. When I look at him, he's good. When I can't see him, he's good. When he give me a house, he's good. When I got to live on the street, he's good. When he give me a car, he's good. When I got to ride the bus, he's good. He's good. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody holler, he's good anyhow. I'm done. Somebody tell your neighbor, this is for grown folks. Yeah, this is for grown folks. This ain't for them Christians that only show up in good times. Amen. Amen. This ain't for them Christians that got their life tied to a preacher. See, when you grow up, 
you give God glory. I don't need Pastor Artez for me to give him glory. I don't need Pastor Kim for me to give him glory. When I think about how good he's been to me, when he brought me out, where my praise is at, when he brought me through, I give him glory. I'll give him glory if Naya preach. Yeah. Boy, I got a praise in church in here. I love y'all. Because it take grown folk to shout on this message. This means I ain't got it together. This means I might be broke. This means I might be struggling. This means I might be crying. This means I might be sick. This means I might be depressed. I might be going through anxiety. But God is. My, my, my. The text says, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Y'all got that? See, what I want this new church, Brown, I need the church to transition in its thinking. Because when you get your thinking right, this is what it said. This is what Paul said. He said, I would, I'm not going to boast in nothing but my infirmity. Which means that, this is Monica, what it, what it means is, get this, get this. It, it means, get this, Sawyer. It says, Tish, get this. I'm praising God, and I ain't even out of it. <laughs> I'm giving him glory, and I'm still in it. That's what that means. He's showing us. He's showing us how the church ought to behave. How y'all behaving is how the church, Miss Burt, that's how we're supposed to behave. It ain't going best. My best, Lisa, it ain't, it, it, I ain't on top of the mountain, but God still brought me here. He woke me up. Gave me another chance. He said in verse 9, don't sit, I'm finished. He said, I'm pleading. He says, and he says, I'm not going to wait till it's over. I'm going to boast. Uh, he, says, he says, most gladly I would rather boast in my infirmity. Though notice where the praise takes place. It takes place while he's still in his trouble. That's where the praise takes place. Is that all right? I'm done. We got to go to Rocky Mountain. I know y'all going. Yeah, I know y'all going with me. We're going on. Y'all going to help me. Yeah, don't y'all play. Yeah. The story is given. Come on, preachers. Come on, preachers. The story is given. First lady, get this. The story is given about a man who, get, get this, get this, get this, y'all. The story is given about a man who gave his wife roses. Get this. She was so excited, T. She was so excited about the roses that she grabbed the roses and the thorns were still on it. When she grabbed the roses, her hands are hurting and her hands are bleeding from holding the roses. But because of the gesture of her husband of giving her the roses, the roses are beautiful and she holds on to the stem even though it's painful and hurting. God told me to ask y'all, will you hold on to the stem even though it's not feeling good right now, can you hold on to it? Because the rose is still my gift. Oh, not talking to me. 
I gave it to you and even though it's painful, hold on to it. Chantel, he told me to ask the church. Y'all still with me? We got two minutes. Y'all still with me? He told me to ask the church, how much can he give you and not lose you? Because some folk, as soon as he bless them, Amani, as soon as he bless them, they got the nose in the air. And nose is so far in the air, Ronnie, if it rain, they'll drown. God says, stay humble. Stay low. People wonder, all the time they ask me, Bishop, how did you get so successful in ministry? Because I stayed low. Stay low. You ain't got to puff yourself up. Just stay low. Watch God work. If he going to get the glory, you stay low. Watch God use you. And then you'll look around 30 years later talking about how in the world did I get here? You know why? Because you got to stay low. Come on, tell somebody on your road, stay low, stay low. Stay humble. Angela Hill, use folk that stay low. Folks says get puffed up. He can't use those folk. He looking for folks that understand there will be a predicament mentioned. He needs folk that will understand that a purpose will manifest. And then he needs folk that will have a petition that they will call. Predicament, purpose, and petition. What's the petition? Tell God about it. Call on God. Let him work it out for you. He'll do it. He'll do it. If you knock on the door and he don't answer the door, keep knocking. If he don't answer the second time, keep on knocking. Because sooner or later, God going to answer your prayer. Can I give that to you? God said, how much can I give you and still not lose you? I want you to stay in place. Let me work through you. Some of you in here, this is my, this is my prophecy over your life. God is going to raise you up. And the only thing he needs from you is to make sure that he don't give you too much that he loses you. When grandmama and them used to say, you can't beat God giving, you ought to try beating them giving. Y'all didn't hear me. You ought to try beating them giving. Not just to church, but to folks. Blessing folk around you. Blessing those that you know are in need. Yeah, try to beat them giving. Watch him just give you more and more and more. Because that's how God operates. Before we go, let me open the doors of the church. If you're here, you need him, come on. Today is your day. Maybe you need a church home. Maybe you need a church family. If it's you, come on. Today is your day. Our time is up. But you're here. We got time to receive you just as you are. Somebody in here struggling. Somebody in here that slid back. And you need to get back into the fold. Now is the time. Come on. Let God work for you. Let God fix it for you. Final, final call is for somebody that needs special prayer. If that's you. Whatever it is. Bring it to the altar. Whatever it is. Come on and give it to God. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, bring him on. Yeah. This is what I Yeah.
Yeah. You coming signifies that even in pain and suffering, you believe that God can work it out. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. There is no secret to what God's able to do. What he's done for others, he is capable and able to do it for you. Spirit of the living God, here we are standing at the foot of your cross. Here we are, God, with the cares and concerns of life that have plagued us down. But our commitment is, God, lest we boast, you have given us this thorn in our flesh. And all we ask, God, is if you don't remove it, just give us sustaining power. Give us the ability to hold on. Give us the ability not to give up. Give us the ability that we don't turn around. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh around this altar. Somebody has got a care that has been plaguing them. It's been so rough. They've been trying for year after year after year to get out from under it. But it seemed like they can't shake it. But God, right now in the name of Jesus, move throughout this altar and move throughout this building. And each individual person, I ask that you would attend to every need. Send your anointing power that makes them, God, understand and believe that tomorrow will be a better day. And if not, they'll wait to Tuesday to be a better day. And if not, they'll wait to Wednesday to be a day. Because sooner or later, you are going to show up and show out. And so, God, we put it into your hand, God, saying, have your way now. Oh, God, heal us, deliver us, lift us up, set us free. And there are those around the altar, God, we're praying for others. Because we saw you do it for us. We saw you heal us. We saw you you turn us up. we saw you break through for us so spirit of the living God do it for somebody else somebody going through anxiety depression and pain oh God send your stabilizing power I declare and decree right now you are Jehovah Rafi our healer you are Jehovah Jireh our provider you are Jehovah Shalom our mental and keeper of our mind so thank you God for your deliverance thank you for lifting us out of it thank you God for giving us power to hold on your sustaining power your holding power your keeping power thank you God <laughs> thank you Lord Thank you, God. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, God. For sustaining power. Maybe you're not going to deliver me today. But just keep me. If you're not going to remove my thorn, just hold me. If you're not going to take away my pain, just wrap your arms around me. All I need to know to make it is that you're still by my side. So thank you now. All that has been petitioned at this altar. That if you don't deliver them, give them the power to hold on. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning.
We give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Tell somebody he going to sustain.